It's crazy how many different law enforcement agencies have sent search warrants to the Signal Foundation at this point to try and get some kind of useful data about their users. I think the feds may have actually started to believe their own propaganda posts that they're constantly making online about how the Signal Messenger is compromised or it actually does store some kind of sensitive information about their users on a server somewhere that the FBI can access whenever they want. Either that or law enforcement must just really enjoy looking at those sweet, sweet Unix timestamps. So the latest search warrant comes from Santa Clara County in California. And you know, now that I take a closer look, most of the subpoenas that are posted on Signal's government request blog are actually from the state of California. Go figure. <laughs> now, one thing that kind of stood out to me about this latest subpoena is that it didn't contain a laundry list of personal data requests like they would normally give to Facebook, Twitter, or some other spookier social media app. Like, take a look at this search warrant from 2021. This is from Santa Clara County, so same county in the same state. And if we scroll down to the data that's being requested, they're asking for everything but the kitchen sink. They want the billing records, including method of payment, date of when the accounts were opened and registered, all the names, physical addresses, and email addresses that are associated with the account. But of course, none of this data is stored by Signal. In fact, a lot of it is never even asked for in the application. So fast forward to a couple of days ago, and this time, Santa Clara was asking for account records and subscriber information between July 29th, 2014 and January 13th, 2023. And they're asking for the information about these accounts. This is seven redacted phone numbers. And if we scroll a little bit more, we can see that what they want is the Unix timestamps for when each account was created and the date that each account last connected to Signal. And a follow-up request was made again for Unix timestamps for two more redacted accounts by Santa Clara County. And this is for information between July 29th, 2014 and February 3rd, 2023. Now let's take a look at Signal's response. So again, all the personal information is redacted and we can see here that they're only providing information for three out of the nine phone numbers. And they're also providing the information in a human readable <laughs> date format instead of a Unix timestamp. So I guess that's actually a little bit more convenient, you know? Law enforcement is starting to ask for information Signal actually has, and Signal is coughing it up, and I guess an easier to digest way. Um, but you'll notice that six of those nine phone numbers are missing. And Signal says down here that they have no information for those numbers, which means that those numbers were not used to create any Signal accounts. So this tells me that there is still a little bit of a lack of due diligence on law enforcement's end because you can at least tell, or at least you used to be able to tell, if a Signal account was associated with a phone number or not by first adding that phone number into your contacts and then trying to message that number on Signal. Or at one point it even told you, hey, this person's available on Signal, again, as long as you had them in your contacts already. Now, this did change a little bit with the usernames update that Signal released towards the beginning of this year because now you can change the default settings, I believe it's under privacy in the signal settings, to make it so that nobody can find you by your phone number, they can only find you by your username, and of course you can change your username to pretty much whatever you want as often as you want, so it's much less personal than a phone number. So this latest subpoena shows us that law enforcement is at least learning a little bit about what Signal actually stores, but not necessarily learning 
how to figure out whether or not someone has a Signal account before they just go and start requesting a whole bunch of phone numbers. Um, but they are still wanting the Unix timestamp. So perhaps those could be used as corroborating evidence of a crime that was committed. I know that police do a lot of requests to Google to see if a suspect's device pinged Google Maps, for example, to prove that they were in a certain location at a certain time. But I would think that these Unix timestamps are even less useful than that because Signal isn't storing logs of every single time that you connect to their service. Now, while Santa Clara is trying to piece together these timestamps with the rest of their evidence, the governments of Venezuela and Russia have taken a different approach. Last week, they decided to just ban Signal altogether by forcing all of the internet providers in the country to block connections to Signal's website and their communication servers. But even this isn't going to be enough to totally prevent people in those countries from using Signal because the messenger comes with a contingency plan in the app settings under privacy options and on the advanced sub option, there is a box for censorship circumvention that will connect you to a proxy before you connect to signal servers. This is very similar to Tor's bridges that allow people in countries like China to continue using the Tor browser. Also, like the Tor network, these TLS proxies that are used to circumvent signal censorship are run by volunteers, and you can run one yourself if you want to help people in these less free countries be able to communicate freely. There's an official script for setting up a TLS proxy with Docker on Signal's GitHub page, which I'll link below. Now, a lot of these public proxies and official ones that are run by Signal are probably gonna end up getting blocked in the coming days if they aren't blocked already, similarly to how China blocks public Tor bridges in the Great Firewall. But you can still connect with private unlisted signal proxies. So if you know someone in these countries, you could set up one of these proxies to communicate with them and just keep the address of it on the down low. The proxies are already obfuscated. According to Signal, the traffic that's sent to them looks like regular web traffic. So the only way of defeating this would be to shut down the whole internet like Iran did a few years ago during protests. But even then, there's low bandwidth satellite networks that can be connected to with conventional set-top boxes and TV satellites that are capable of transferring a few gigabytes worth of data each day. So that's still good enough for text communications, but obviously not much else. But total internet shutdown is going to be a last resort for pretty much any country because of the harm it does to its economy. In fact, that one week internet blackout in Iran was estimated to have done $1.5 billion in losses to the economy, and small businesses are often hurt the worse. So yeah, Running relays and routing traffic is still the best way to fight censorship and tyranny, both domestically and abroad, until these countries manage to set up fully functional intranets and have their own completely isolated cyberpunk dystopias. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm, and check out my online store, Base.Win, where you can get awesome merch like the tie-dye tour tee or the Come and Find It hoodie. 10% discount at checkout for paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.